You know, we, we have theologians, they say, well, that was then. This is now. God's not doing that any longer. What's wrong with you? It is still the will of God. He is still Jehovah Rapha. He is still the God that heals us. He is still, look, the blood of Jesus still not only washes away our sin. That'd be like saying, well, the blood of Jesus worked back then, but it doesn't work today. That same blood still works today. Any and every Christian, any and every preacher would tell you that. The blood of Jesus still is valid today. That means if the blood of Jesus is still valid today for our salvation, it is valid today for our healing, it is valid today for our deliverance, it is valid today for any and everything that the law of sin and death brings on us. It is valid to cleanse us of those things. Good morning. We want to welcome you to our Sunday morning broadcast. Pastors David and Donna Spearman welcome you. Welcome to Kingdom First, located here in Fort Wayne. As we say, God loves Fort Wayne. But now, let's get into this power-packed message. Moving on our behalf, in the name of Jesus, we worship you. We thank you for your presence today. Glory be to God. Lord, you're mighty. 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 Oh Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. You say your glory above the heavens and the earth.
opportunity for us to tell the Lord how much we love him. The love he has for us is like a love like no other. Thank you, God. We love you, God. We love you, Lord. Praise his name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Just tell the Lord how much you love him right now. Tell the Lord how much you love him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, sing along. I love you, Jesus. Lord, we worship and adore. I worship and adore. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. I love you. More than I love you. I love you. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. We worship and adore. I worship and adore. Just want to tell you, God. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We just want to say we love you, God. We thank you, Lord, for your grace, for your mercy, God. We love you, Lord. Lord, I love you. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. 
everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. I want to give God thanks tonight by just saying, I will sing your praise for you've done such a marvelous thing. For someone so wretched, yet my soul you have redeemed. No one else could do it. No one could care.
you save me? It's marvelous. It was so marvelous. Marvelous. When you delivered me. Marvelous. It was marvelous. So marvelous. And then you changed me, Lord. It's marvelous. You rearranged me. Rearranged me. You set me free. Set me free. Free from sin. today we appreciate you and we want you to know that God loves you and uh, he loves whatever city you're in and whatever country you're in he loves you so praise God all right we uh, started out last week talking about a leper is cleansed the name of our message is uh, the heading a major heading is Jesus the healer Jesus the healer and so this week, uh, last week, we talked about a leprous cleanse. We're going to continue talking about that because I think it was extremely important. Uh, so let me read uh, Matthew 8, 1 through 4, where the event happens. When Jesus came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. And a leper came to him and bowed down before him and said, Lord, if you are willing. Now notice his words. Lord, if you are willing you can make me clean. So if it's, if, if it's your will, you can make me clean. Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately, immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one, but go show yourself to the priests and present the offering that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Now, last week we talked about all, we talked about this leper. We talked about what it meant to have leprosy. If you didn't hear it last week, you need to go back and hear it because I'm not going to go back over that again. But let me say this. I am totally, completely convinced with, all, with all, everything in me that healing is the will of God for you today. Healing is the will of God for you today. So with that, I want to start out here uh, not really talking about the leper. I did that last week, but I want to continue on talking about the, what the will of God is for you. And so in Exodus 15, 26, now remember the leper said, if you are willing. And for a lot of us, that's where we are. Lord, if you're willing, if it's your will, it, it, you know, would, you, would you please do this? And sometimes we get real desperate and we're begging. I'm not saying anything wrong with begging, but, but, but we get real desperate about begging and so forth and so on, and we get real bit desperate in those particular areas. But I don't believe that that's how God wants us to react. I am convinced with every fiber of my being that healing is for each and every single one who comes to God in faith. Exodus 15, 26. And he said... This is what he says. If you, now this is God speaking to the Israelites. If you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord, 
your God, if you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes, this is what he says, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians. Now remember, they, this is in the book of Exodus. They had just came out of Egypt. They have just went across the Red Sea. They had just, you know, did all this. And now they are in the wilderness and they are, you know, moving along toward the promised land. And God begins to tell them, if you do right by me, I will put none of the diseases on you which I put on the Egyptians. Now, let me tell you something before I read the rest of this. When you look at the 40-year history of the children of Israel in the wilderness, one of the things you'll find out is their clothes never wore out. Their shoes never wore out. They did not have sickness. Don't, one of the worst things, well, they did have a, a plague a little bit, you know, because they sinned. They did get bit by snakes because they sinned. But as far as the natural course of sickness and disease upon the human body, they never got it. God said, I will, uh, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have put on Egyptians. Now, here's the important part. For I, the Lord, am your healer. For I, the Lord, am your healer. Right there, if you need healing, that scripture right there ought to, ought to wake you up and say, hey, this is for me today because God told them almost, was it four or 5,000 years ago, for I, the Lord, am your healer, and he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He says, for, now this is actually the first place that you will find the name Jehovah Rapha. And that's what that name, that's what he's, when he says, I the Lord am your healer, he's saying, I am Jehovah Rapha, which means what? The Lord, Lord your healer. But it also means the Lord who restores, the Lord who makes whole. In other words, he is the God who takes whatever ravages your body, removes it off of you so you can be made whole, so you can be restored, so you can be healed. And here again, I'm convinced that God is willing to heal everybody because here's the thing we've been sold. We've been sold a bill of goods. And the bill of goods we've been sold is, if it be thy will. Well, you have to know what God's will is to know if you can receive what it is you're asking for. And if you don't know what the will of God is, then you're not going to know whether that thing is yours or not. Am I right? There are seven redemptive, redemptive rather, names of God. Seven. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to tell you one of them. One of them is Jehovah Rapha. All right? And that's Jehovah, meaning the, self the self-existent one who reveals himself. I am the one who is. I am. Rapha, meaning healer, restorer, the one who makes whole. So here we have Jehovah who says, I, who I am, I'm the self-existing one who reveals himself to you. I heal you. Now, if he says he's the healer, then it must mean it is his will to heal. And in fact, if he takes healing and makes it part of his name, then that means it is his will for you to be healed because he names himself Jehovah Rapha. Isn't that right? Let me kind of take you, little, give you a little sidebar. The, the initials W-H-Y-H, excuse me, Y-H-W-H, I said it backwards, Y-H-W-H, we know, is the name of God, Yahweh. In Hebrew, we know there's no vowels, only consonants. So we don't know what the vowels were for Y-H-W-H. It was such a sacred name that the Hebrews would not uh, even pronounce it except once a year on the Day of Atonement. The high priest would announce the name on the Day of Atonement. Well, over the centuries, uh, the pronunci pronunci that pronunciation, excuse me, of that name has been lost. It's been lost to history. Later, they tried to regain the pronunciation, so they add the vowels from the word Adane. 
So they made the name Y-E-H-O-W-A-H, Yehovah. The Latinization of that name is Jehovah. So that's where we get Jehovah from. So when somebody says, well, Jehovah is not the name of God, it's Y-H-W-H, and, and a lot of us, it, the, the common thing is that it's Yahweh. It may be, it may not be. But by adding the, just the vowels from Adane to it, it comes out, the Latinization of it is Jehovah, and, that's, and, and it's just like any other name that you translate into another language, Jehovah is his name. I guess that's all I'm trying to tell you. When you see the name Lord in your Bible as capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, it signifies Y-H-W-H or Yahweh. So when we look at the name in the scripture in Exodus 15, 26, when he says, I, the Lord, he's talking about him as the I am, and he says, I am your healer. It is God's will for you to receive healing. God has revealed his personal name as an attempt to have a close, intimate relationship with humankind, with his people. In the Bible and in ancient times, the name meant something. You didn't just the parents just didn't pull out a name because it sounded good. They gave you a name that meant something. It had weight. It just wasn't something slapped on a birth certificate, all right? A name could determine your purpose. A name could, be, could even set the trajectory of your life. Just a name could set your, could set the future, your future ahead of you. Just a name. It, would, it could determine your family lineage. Just your name. God declares in Exodus 15, 26, I am Jehovah who heals. In Psalms 103, 3, he says, who pardons all your uh, iniquities and who heals all your diseases. Talking about God. Who pardons all your iniquities and who heals all your diseases. What I'm trying to take you, what I'm, what I'm trying to take you is for you to understand and know that it is the will of God for you to be healed. Now, the logical question for most of us is, well, if that is the will of God, then why aren't I healed? Right? God is a healer. We know that. We read in Scripture, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and we see that Jesus healed everybody who came to him. In fact, the only time we saw that he did not heal anybody was when he was in his hometown. And in that hometown, where the people looked at him not as the Messiah, not as uh, the great teacher, not as rabbi, they looked at him as a little boy who used to make cabinets with his dad. And when, they, and when he began to minister and preach to them, they said, how is he able to do this? Because we know him as this over here. In other words, they knew him not as he, as he was presenting himself, but they knew him as someone who they knew years ago who had not come into his full, complete ministry. They saw him from where he was, not what he is. And that's the mistake a lot of times we make. We don't understand, number one, we don't understand God. But we don't understand how, how people themselves can grow. We don't understand how people can come into their full ministry, how people can come into the, the anointing and the power of God into their life. We don't, we don't see that. We don't understand that. And, and, and we have a tendency to always look back at what, you, what somebody was. It's like if you had me to, you know, you, today if you left out of here and you saw somebody who you knew 20 or 25 years ago when you, were not, when you weren't saved. And they're going to come to you and talk to you and deal with you as if you were that same person 20, 25 years ago. You understand? They're not going to, they're not going to look at you and say, oh, you know, they're not going to come to you and say, oh, you know, I haven't seen you in 25 years. I know you changed. They're going to look at you and, 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 and start talking about the same things that you all talked about 20 years ago. Well, that's how they did Jesus when he went back to his hometown. They began to look at him and deal with him as he was when he was a kid, not as the son of man. And so the Bible says that he could do very few things there 
Why? Because they had no faith in who he was. They had no faith in who he was. And, and I'm sad to report that for many of us today, we don't have any faith in who he is. The same faith it took to receive salvation is the same faith it takes to receive healing from Jesus. But sadly, we don't have that same faith because many times we see it, we, we look more at the sickness and disease than we do at Jesus. Remember the leper. The Bible calls him a leper. He lost his name. He lost his position. He lost his family. He lost his standing in the community. He lost everything. He was nobody but a leper. That's all he was. And that's all people saw him as, a leper. Even the Bible just calls him a leper. They didn't even call out his name. And so many times we are identified by our sickness, our disease. We take upon the name of the thing that is trying to kill us. We take it and carry it about like it's a newborn baby. We feed it. We do everything we need to do because that becomes a part of us now. And we even identify with it. My cancer, my diabetes. I've seen that commercial, my wife, and I hate this commercial, where the lady gets up and sings, and the first thing out of her mouth, she says, I have a touch of diabetes. I have. She self-identifies with that. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We've been programmed and conditioned to identify with these things. We've been told that's how we, we, we are, you know, this is, you know, when the doctor comes to you, he says, you are now this disease, this sickness. You have pneumonia. You, ha you have. It's a part of you. You're connected to it. You need to disconnect yourself. You need to disconnect yourself. Because the more you connect with it, it simply means, very simply, when the more you connect with it, the more it becomes stronger in your life. You connect with it, it gains strength. Disconnect from it, it loses strength. And so we connect with it, and we say, ah, okay, well, you know, this is, this is you know, this is who I, basically what we're saying is this is who I am now. This is who I am now. And we may come to the church and say, oh, they say I have this, they say I have that. Oh, please, yeah, pray for me, pray for me. And we pray for people, and we pray for them, and we pray for them, and we pray for them. But you have to say within yourself, I am no longer that. I'm no longer that sickness, I'm no longer that disease, I'm no longer that thing. I am, I am who I am, who God has made me. How, what, is, what has God declared you are? Why don't we ever declare what God has declared we are? Why don't we ever say who God says we are? What does God say about you? Do you know? Do you even, do you even know what God is saying about you? How, what he's declared, what does God, how does God see you? Does God see you as some weak, sick, pathetic thing? Or does God see you as vibrant and healthy and doing the will of God and moving throughout the world doing the things that God has destined you to do? If God has given you a destiny, that means he sees you in that destiny. I'll say it again. If God has given you a destiny, that means he sees you in that destiny. He's not seeing you where you see yourself. He's seen you as what he called you to be. When he deals with you, he's dealing with you as he's called you to be. You've got to have the right vision. If you don't have the right vision, then what, you, what will happen is you'll continue to see yourself as the world sees you, as your sickness or disease sees you and has attached itself to you, as the doctors see you, as everybody else has seen you. It doesn't mean that Listen, it doesn't mean that we deny what is happening. What we are doing is rising above what is happening and declaring that that no longer is valid in my life because 
I am above that. God sees me as with a destiny, and I have to see myself with that same destiny. If God is telling you, has told you, you're going to go around the world preaching, then you have to see yourself going around the world preaching. Yeah, but pastor, I'm laid up here sick. See yourself preaching. See yourself delivering the word of God. Preach it from your bedside if you've got to. But you cannot, you cannot, you cannot see yourself as a diseased person. The leper said, if you are willing, if you are willing, you can make me clean. He knew that the power of God resided in Jesus. And all Jesus had to do was say a word and he would be clean. He knew that. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been there. Otherwise, he wouldn't have taken, uh, taken all the ridicule, ridicule and scorn to make his way there. He would have never left that cave. He did what it take, took because he knew that all he had to do was get to Jesus and he would be healed. All you have to do is get to Jesus. How do we get to Jesus today? We pray. We go to the house of God and let the man of God lay hands upon us. There are methods of healing, and we employ one of the methods that God has established for us to be healed. Amen. But we do what it takes to get there. I don't care if you got to ride the altar every day, all day. Ride it till you get what belongs to you. Let me go back to Psalms 103.3. Who pardons all your iniquities. Now, we don't have a problem with that, do we? Jesus pardons all your iniquities. God has pardoned all your iniquities, all your sins, all those things. You had on the cross, correct? Everybody can, everybody can say yes? yes? Are you listening? Are you breathing? Are you here? Can you say yes? It's there. Yes, he's done that. We know we are saved. You know beyond a shadow of a doubt you're saved. If you walked out there and somebody said, you ain't saved, you say, yes, I am. You'd argue them all up all day and all, uh, all night, declaring, yes, I am saved. Who are you to tell me I'm not saved? I'm saved. The blood of Jesus has washed me clean. I am saved, 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 sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. You would tell any and everybody you are saved. There's not a doubt in your mind. Then why is there a doubt in your mind about God's healing you? Because the same atonement that brought you salvation is the same atonement that brought you healing. It's the same thing. The same atonement brought you salvation. Look at what it says in Psalms 103. Who pardons all your iniquities. Yay! Who heals all your diseases. Well... God is not only a healer, but he's made healing a part of the redemptive process. Sin is what caused the broken spiritual relationship with God. We know that. We all know the story of Adam. I don't have to repeat it and go through it again. We know that Adam disobeyed, which broke the relationship between him and God. And opened the door for the law of sin and death to be active in the human race. Right? So if sin caused a broken relationship, sin also is what caused disease and sickness to be able to manifest itself in your flesh. Your, your spirit isn't sick. Your spirit doesn't have a disease. If you, I'm talking about saved folk. If you're not saved, your spirit does have a disease. It's called sin. Listen, sickness is not a result of you having committed a sin. I'm going to say it again. Sickness is not a result of you having committed a sin. Sickness and disease is a result of being born a sinner. Because you're born under the law of sin and death. And sin, death, disease, sickness, infirmity all comes under that law. Now, you can do things that will cause sickness to manifest itself, manifest itself in you. Drink enough alcohol, and you get cirrhosis of the liver. 
You know, don't eat right and so forth. So you can, you can do things that will cause sickness and disease in your life. No doubt about it. But sickness and disease is normally upon you because you're born a sinner. Plain and simple. Jesus never had sickness and disease upon his life because he was not born a sinner. He was born sinless. And so now you and me, who are now saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, his blood on the cross washed away my sin, but it also healed all my diseases. The good news is that God lays sickness, disease, and sin on Jesus. So when he put our sins away, he put our diseases away. Listen to Romans 8, 2, and 3. For the law of the spirit of life, the, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. What else is under the law of sin and death? Sickness and disease. So if the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death, we say, ah, see, I'm no longer a sinner. Yes, and I'm no longer diseased. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, what the law could not do, to talk about the law of sin and death, because it was weak as it was through the, uh, through the flesh, God did sending his own son in the likeness, in the likeness, not, you don't notice it didn't say in sinful flesh, but in the likeness of sinful flesh, and as an offering, the Lamb of God, without blemish, without spot, as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Not only did he condemn sin in the flesh, but he also condemned sickness and disease. Y'all hear what I'm saying? This will help you. Because, see, the devil will tell you, oh, yeah, yeah, he, oh, yeah, well, you know, God put that on you. God never put no sickness and disease upon his saints. In fact, what did he tell the Israelites? He says, I won't put what the diseases I put on Egypt, I won't put on you. I won't put on you. So what is he saying to you? What, what the sickness and diseases from the law of sin and death, I will not put on you because now you are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. You are washed clean. You are a brand new creature in Christ. And sickness, disease, and sin is not a part of your heritage. Glory to God. Jesus tells the leper, I am willing. I am willing. So is it God's will to heal? First, let's look at Jesus. Is God manifested in the flesh? Amen? Amen? Number two, Jesus is love and the word manifested in the flesh. Amen? He's the word. And, and in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. Number three, Jesus is the will of God manifested in the flesh. Okay, I'll prove it to you. John chapter 4, verse 31. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. Because they had went out to get him something to eat. He came back, and he brought the food, and yet, guess what? He wasn't, he wasn't hungry. So he said, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. I've got, I've got food that you have, no, you have no clue about, you have no idea about. So the disciples were saying to one, one to another, no one brought him anything to eat, did he? Did anybody bring him something? Because he sent us out to get something, we came back with something, and now he's somebody he ain't hungry. Did anybody bring him anything? Jesus said to them, he said, listen, my food, my food, what sustains me, what keeps me going, is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Two things there, to do the will and the work of God. I'll say it again, to do the will 
and the work of God. So Jesus says, my job, my food, my, what keeps me going is being able to do the will and the work of God. Now, look at John 5, chapter 5, verse 30, next, next chapter. He tells them, I can do nothing on my own initiative. In other words, I can do nothing of myself. I don't have, I'm not here to do anything that I want to do. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because. Now he's saying, as I hear what is said and done around me, he says, I judge, and my judgment is just because, and this is why, in other words, he said, I do not seek my own will but the will of him who sent me. So G now those two scriptures tell you that Jesus came to do what? The will of God. He did nothing on his own. Everything he did, he did based on the will of God. Isn't that what it's saying? Help me out here. Isn't that what it's saying? I, I do nothing of my own self. I, I do nothing of my own initiative. I, 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 I don't do anything that I'm thinking that ought to be done. I'm not looking at a situation that God has told me to do one thing and I'm saying, well, yeah, but I think, I think if I do it this way, it's better. He says, not, that's not me. He said, I'm only here to do the will of God and, and, and complete the work of God. Not what I want. Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane when he was praying. And what did he, what did he, say, what did he say when he was praying? He said, not my will, but thy will be done. Because he'd asked that this cup would pass from him. But then he said, but not what I want, but what you want. All his life, he'd been doing what God, the Father, had warned him to do. And, he, and at the, toward the very end, he says, it's still not even what I want, but it's what you want. So, He's here to do the will of God. He did nothing of himself. Everything he did was in the will of God. Would you agree with that based on scripture? Okay, so we can be assured then that healing is the will of God for you. Why? Because Jesus only did the will of God and accomplished the work of God. So if he was healing people, then the healing process that he was utilizing to lay hands upon them, to speak a word, whatever, was because it was the will of God and not a one-off. You know, we, we have theologians, they say, well, that was then. This is now. God's not doing that any longer. What's wrong with you? It is still the will of God. He is still Jehovah Rapha. He is still the God that heals us. He is still, look, the blood of Jesus still not only washes away our sin. That'd be like saying, well, the blood of Jesus worked back then, but it doesn't work today. That same blood still works today. Any and every Christian, any every preacher would tell you that. The blood of Jesus still is valid today. That means if the blood of Jesus is still valid today for our salvation, it is valid today for our healing, it is valid today for our deliverance, it is valid today for any and everything that the law of sin and death brings on us, it is valid to cleanse us of those things. You can be assured that healing is the will of God because Jesus only came to do the will of God and accomplish his work. Jesus didn't heal the sick to prove who he was. He didn't have to do that. He healed the sick because he's Jehovah Rapha manifested in the flesh because he's a God that heals. And so what, what does the Bible say in so many scriptures? It tells us Jesus had what? Compassion. 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 His compassion would overtake him. And guess what? He didn't move by emotion. He was moved by compassion. And that compassion was to see a lost and dying humanity who was suffering in sickness and disease, who were crippled and halt. And he would look at his creation. This was not what he intended. This was not how it was supposed to be. And with his compassion, obeying his own, his own laws, he'd heal the sick. And there were times, the book of Mark tells us, there were times that he would be up all night 
People would be, keep bringing people to him. And the Bible said, and he healed them all. The blind, the crippled, the lepers, those who are missing limbs. He healed them all, the withered hands. It was love that drove Jesus to do what he did because it's the will of God. His compassion for his creation moved him to heal those who came in faith because it was the will of God and it still is the will of God. God is not the author of sickness and disease. That's the result of the law of sin and death. Deliverance from the law of sin and death is the will of God for you. Deliverance from the law of sin and, God, sin, sin, and, sin and death, excuse me, is the will of God for you. So when Jesus said, I am willing to the leper, he added these words, be clean. Be clean. See, he specified and pinpointed exactly what he wanted to happen for him. Be clean. So, and he touches him, validating his humanity. Because you didn't touch a leper. They were not, they weren't, as far as most people are concerned, they weren't human. So he touched him with compassion and love, validating his humanity. This was one of his creations. And restored him to the community of human fellowship. Restored him to that place. We can now, once again, fellowship with human beings, be a part, go to synagogue or go to temple, be with his family, get his name back. Immediately, he was cleansed. Every sign of leprosy disappeared, vanished, boom, gone. Immediately, there was a change. I'm telling you, the suddenly is still happen. The immediates still happen. God is still immediately healing people. People are still suddenly being changed. Suddenly! Boom! There was a change. Woo! His body with health was healthy. He was whole. I don't know if I don't know if leprosy is a virus or what it is, but that thing was gone. What anointing. What power. What deliverance. Everybody, tens of thousands of people were there. And everybody saw this tremendous miracle. Everybody. And over in Mark chapter 1, verse 45, it states that the lep Jesus told the leper, don't tell anybody. <laughs> tens of thousands of people saw it. And you're telling him, don't tell anybody. In Mark 1, 45, it talks about the same event, but Mark asks this that the leper declared his cleansing to everybody. All he talked about was how he once was a leper, and now he is clean. He, I encountered Jesus. I saw Jesus. I met Jesus. Jesus touched me. I said, if you are willing, and he says, I am willing, and he touched me and said, now be clean. And he told any and everybody who would listen, all everybody who remembered that he was a leper, he told him, see, look at me, I'm clean. I've been to the priest. I've been to the temple. I brought the offering that Moses said to bring. They looked at me and examined me and said, I'm clean. It was a testimony. Jesus said it was going to be a testimony to them. And they shouted, and ho shouted hallelujah because it was a testimony to them that God had cleansed me. Look at me. I'm clean. Look at me. I'm healthy. Look at me. I'm restored. Look at me. I no longer have sickness or disease. I'm not bound anymore. I've been set free. Hallelujah. Look at me. Touch me. See me. I'm free. And the Bible says because of his testimony. Because of his testimony. Jesus could no, could no longer go into the cities. Because the crowds would be so great. He had to stay out in the countryside. Because of this man's testimony. Of being immediately cleansed. 
Let me close up with this. God is looking to restore you. He's looking to restore your life. He doesn't want you to be known by some disease, some sickness. He doesn't want you to be known by some infirmity. He doesn't want you to be known by that. He wants you to be known by the destiny he set for you. What he's called you to be, who he's called you to be. That's what he wants you to be known by. He wants to restore your finances, your health. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals you. He's 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 the God that heals you. Do you believe now? Do you believe it now? Do you believe it now? It is the will of God to heal you, to deliver you, to make you whole, to restore you. Everything the law of sin and death has stolen from you and did to you, it was done away with at the cross. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God. For those who are watching my streaming live, God bless you. I want you to know that your healing, your deliverance is right here. Reach out your hand right now. And I declare that in the name of Jesus, be made whole. Be cleansed, be delivered, be healed in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And I want you to write us and let us know. You can send us an email and let us know your testimony of what God has done for you, how he's delivered you, because your healing was done for you at the cross. It's part of the redemption package. Part of the benefits, the redemption package. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next week.